Welcome. My name is Michael, and on behalf of Modlon, I will talk about weight versus efficiency of the boost turbofan today. First, I will describe the industrial context in which this concept is studied. I will therefore start with a recap of some of the challenges of the aircraft and our engine industry, and then talk about success factors they identify in simulation and analysis, or CAE. After mapping these needs against Model on Impact, the web-based system simulation platform, we move over to the technical details of the parallel hybrid. We review the four established concepts of operation and expose key weight versus efficiency trends. In the end, I will wrap up with conclusions. So what is really going on? Even though we don't see many planes in the air in the current situation, the industry is under enormous pressure to reduce emissions. And there are really many options. People need to find a way how to reach the targets in the safest and fastest way. Now, nobody of us knows whether purely extrapolating the automotive approach of electrifying and hybridizing powertrains is the most meaningful, we don't know where the hydrogen will be feasible, but we already saw some of the complications. And what we at Marlon do is just that all the time we're looking at the challenges industry is facing and we provide ways of analyzing them. And in the following, I talk about kind of a wish list that we've received and heard about from industry on these key enablers. I call these the real world engineering needs in simulation and analysis. And of course, the focus here is on the relevant segment. So your analytic modeling or architecture level simulation. And the first need sounds fairly basic, but it's really fundamental. People want to have steady state and dynamic simulation and the same tool. And of course that is required because as products become more and more complex and sophisticated, you need to predict any relevant behavior. And as I often get asked for the difference, here is a short explanation. A dynamic simulation predicts how an engineering system behaves over time, for instance, this aircraft. And then if we modulate any of the actuators over time, the position and the orientation change and the result is really this entire trajectory of all variables over time. And if we're only interested in some equilibrium condition, then we may actually have to simulate a long period before reaching this equilibrium condition. Now with steady state, there isn't any notion of time. We just specify the operating conditions and directly solve the system. Look at this image here for a given case the aircraft is just at the equilibrium. And of course we can change it by going to another condition, maybe a higher velocity and see how a lower angle of attack is required to provide the necessary lift. Additionally, it is hardly possible to use one simulation tool per physical domain, such as aircraft sizing and performance, gas turbines, fuel cells, electrical, fluids, and so on. And it takes decades to build accurate, robust, and fast models. So few projects can really justify the investment costs to create these from scratch. And for those cost and time benefits, managers really want to kickstart their engineering efforts with full stack multi-domain capability. Simulation and analysis software typically has fairly basic functionality such as simulate, import, export, plot. And in relation to the complex standard work that engineers have to implement, these are fairly low level activities. And of course it's error prone and slow if you're implementing all of these in small steps by pressing buttons all the time. So engineers, they want to choose and mix the intuitiveness of a graphical interface with the efficiency and conciseness of kind of micro scripts that they can integrate into the graphical interface. And in the background, 
you see an example of such a process with a multi-point gas turbine aero engine design process using these micro scripts or custom functions and how they can be integrated into the graphical interface. Engineers also ask for additional interfaces to their models and results beyond this classic graphical drag and drop interface. And yeah, examples are analysis notebooks where you can implement sophisticated workflows and web apps for easy and wide access to modeling results. And in the background, you see a workflow running batch analyses and then dumping the results into a slideshow presentation. Teams, of course, want to work together the way they got to know it from web and office technologies. So they want to get access easily, ideally via the browser. They want to be working together without network drives or email attachments. They simply want to share a link to their model. And of course, they also want to access large scale computing infrastructure without hassles when they need it. Lastly, and this is a topic very close to my heart, people want standards. On the right, you see some survey results on implementation issues in model-based systems engineering and the lack of support for open standards enabling interoperability is the main blocker hands down. Now, luckily standards are growing and maturing both in information technology and in engineering and today there is really a wide range of very strong and mature standards and several of them are even de facto standards. Now we at Marlon have not only been observing this, but we're meeting these requirements. After nearly two decades on the market with model libraries and simulation tools, we integrated all our assets into Modlon Impact, the system simulation platform. And after a long period of blood, sweat, and tears with launch customers, we released the platform last summer. And with Modline Impact, we provide a modern browser-based user interface. We provide all our industry libraries in a single package. We deliver the full steady state and dynamic capability, both in terms of simulation and optimization. And of course, we deliver unprecedented customization possibilities. With the real world engineering needs, we already covered what people are asking for. So let me describe what people are achieving when they're getting all this. And in a nutshell, it's value. So if you think about it, modeling by itself only really incurs costs. It's difficult, so you need experts, and it takes time and it takes money. Now, at the same time, there are so many people out there in the extended engineering organization that would benefit and generate end customer value if they just could get system simulation in their hands. And this is what we're working on, more value generation from lowering the barrier to leverage all model assets. Now you may wonder how do people achieve this and it works exactly through those deployments. Model on Impact is really a platform with multiple views and means to access modeling and simulation. And the slide here shows you the three, three main, main variants of that. To the left, you see the graphical desktop with your drag and drop functionality or custom functions or micro scripts to automate workflows interactively. In the middle, you see the notebook interface for sophisticated analyses, mixing code, text, graphical output, plots, etc. And to the right, you see web apps and browser-based dashboards providing casual interfaces to sophisticated simulation. And with all these deployment modes, we address the entire range of users and deliver this step change in value generation. With this, let me move over to the technical details. And as said, people are really looking at 
so many options, hybrid electric, fuel cell, hydrogen, and with model on impact, we can cover all of this, but I have to choose one example. So here is your boosted turbofan. This is also known as the parallel hybrid and in essence, it's the simplest way to yield an electrified aero engine. We just take a gear turbofan and bolt on an electric drive with its power subsystem and a thermal management subsystem to dissipate all the excess heat. And you see the key components here on the slide. A benefit is that the concept is still relatively easy to analyze and install. And as said, there are four main variants that are being considered. The first one applies electric boost during the mission phases in which the aero engine must provide peak power or peak thrust. That's in relation to the requirements in cruise. And of course, these are mainly your takeoff conditions to some extent also climb. And then the power comes from batteries that are carried on the aircraft and the benefits are incurred by downsizing the thermodynamic core that you get by satisfying these peak power demands through the hybrid system. And this is actually the most widely discussed concept of operations. Second, we could also add electric boost during cruise and some people see benefits in this, but there is also a lot of skepticism because of the weight required for the batteries. The third option then shuts down the gas turbine core during taxi and instead uses the electric machine to spin the fan and generate the necessary thrust. And the fourth and last option um, applies electric machines both on the low pressure and the high pressure spool to influence the transient control, so mainly to modulate your search margin of the compressors. The variant that we're covering here is the first one. But before diving into the details of the hybrid electric propulsion system, we actually modeled the aircraft and its conventional powertrain. Um, and the reason is that we want to offer an apples to apples comparison. So here you see the results for a configuration 1A with a single aisle A320 type entry into service 1990s airframe and corresponding turbo fans and a 1B configuration, which has the same airframe, but a conventional gear turbo fan projected for entry into service 2035. And of course that is required to yeah, assess what we're getting later on from this fancy hybrid electric technology to your conventional counterpart. And the slide has a lot of data. You see two vertical axes, altitude, lift coefficients, Mach number, calibrated airspeed and so on. The solid lines typically work with the left vertical axes and the dashed ones with the right vertical axes. But the bottom line is really that you get a couple of hundred nautical miles more from your re-engined aircraft. Next, we create a model of the hybrid electric gas turbine, and I will show you some model diagrams of the graphical user interface. And we start with a multi-point setup to consider the requirements and objectives across different operating conditions, such as rolling takeoff, top of climb, and cruise. The Gas turbine aero engine model then contains the core and the bypass flow components, as well as your low pressure and your high pressure spools uh, and uh, the gearbox. And then we want to come up with this integrated design of the hybrid electric uh, aero engine. So we, of course, also have to add the components of our electric power subsystem to enable that. And you can see the schematic here with the electric machine, cable, inverter, and battery models. This last schematic now illustrates some key geometry dimensions used in the analytic design procedure of the electric machine. Due to the available time, we go right into some results. And here you can see how we vary the specific thrust of the hybrid. This is a key cycle parameter for propulsive efficiency and a low value leads to a low fan pressure ratio and a higher diameter fan that reduces the losses in the wake and therefore leads to a more efficient hybrid. 
To the left of the slide, you see a cut view or flow path of such an engine. We looked at several different installation locations and the one that you see here highlighted with the arrow is the installation inside the intermediate pressure compressor. And from that integrated design and analysis, we get cycle performance results, such as the electric machine efficiency shown on the right to the top and specific fruit consumption, as well as estimated component masses. And then as we step through different values of the specific thrust, as you can see in the title of the flow path to the left and on the abscissa of the plots to the right, we can see how the geometry and the performance and the masses of all the related components change. To wrap up, I'd like to highlight the four concepts of operation of the boosted turbofan that we covered. We saw the improvement in crew specific fuel consumption. And we also saw how specific thrust influences this trade off between hybrid efficiency and weight. Concerning simulation and analysis, we discussed the increased focus on value generation that is enabled by better means for collaboration and additional deployment modes throughout the extended engineering team. And we also discussed enablers for this in terms of open standards, off-the-shelf capabilities, and the integration of cloud resources. With this, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I hope that the material presented was interesting to you. Please join us for the live discussion or reach out via email. Thanks again, stay safe and wear your masks.